Hi there everybody, welcome to my channel, this is Farmer Bob, so awesome to be back with another video on map making, <laughs> and great stuff man, today we're going to have a look at splines, um, for those of you who don't know what splines is, that is basically your automated systems like vehicles, uh, pedestrians and trains and all those stuff falls under splines. Um, how splines basically work um, is it got a start and an end position and it forms a loop from the start to the end and basically your automated vehicles will run from the start to the end in a loop and that's basically what splines are They're very simple and easy to set up nothing fancy nothing difficult I'm just uh, going to show you the way I found to do it I've never actually used it in any of my maps um, I haven't really found uh, I don't think I don't think I really like having pedestrians and vehicles and stuff, you know. And my maps are more nature type of maps, you know, where you don't really find the need for splines <laughs> or vehicles or, or pedestrians walking. You know, I don't have sit I don't build city maps and those kind of things. But if you ever you need um, need to have some splines on your map, I want to show you how to do it, and um, it is actually a very simple and easy process. Now this. Uh, this map I'm using, um, or the start map I used, uh, was built by Yazoo. He did put splines in it by default, and uh, I've just deleted them so I can show you from scratch how to work with splines. And I found that it's much easier to start a spline from scratch than to take an another one and modify it. Because believe me, it's much easier to just start one from scratch than to try and take every little uh, um, waypoint and move it to a different location it will be spaghetti you know in a in a big bowl <laughs> all crazy and and confusing but anyways guys um yes if this is your first time uh, uh, a warm welcome and please do consider to subscribe please do share my uh, videos with friends and people that like um like the game and and, and want to watch mods and map making and and anything about farming simulator reviews and whatever that's what my channel is about so yes um thanks guys let us get stuck in immediately now to get the spline you need to go to the original map um from farming simulator obviously and go into the data folder into maps and you open any of the any of the two maps, the, the map DE is the German one and then the US one is a little bit down below and uh, just let the, the, um, the editor open the map itself and we're going to export the spline well we're going to exploit uh, export the whole transform because I'm going to show you what you actually need in the spline it's just two scripts that you actually want um, you can create the scripts yourself but it's much easier to just export it from the game itself because it's already set up in the game and already working so yes what you do is you go into the map itself where it is and you find the the transform that says splines now you'll notice these all the different splines on the map and if you open the transform it will be there will be the traffic system and it's the, the pedestrian system that's the two that that we basically want so what we're going to do is you click on it you're going to go file you're going to go export selection with files you go into your map, create a folder for it um, under, uh, I think I've made it under maps here and I think I've already done it there and there it is, both of them, yes. So, um, I'm just thinking, no we don't need the whole transform group guys, we only need, sorry, the, we only need the traffic system and the, um, the pedestrian system because there are the two scripts. That's the ones you want. This is just a transform group. It's got nothing in it. There's no attributes to it, nothing. So it's nothing special. It's just a transform group that we can create. We want to just export this too. So what you do is you select the traffic system first. If you want traffic or if you only want pedestrians, doesn't matter. I'm just going to do, do both for fun. Uh, go file, export with files. Go into your map, create a folder for them and just drop it in the splines. I've already done it, so I'm, you just select it, you click save, and you click no to both the questions because we don't want anything with the uh, real game, we want everything to be transferred into your file, into your uh, map. Alright, so both of those, you just export both of those, and there you are, 
You can close this map. We're done with it. You don't want to save any changes because it's the base game. So don't change anything there. If you save changes there, uh, you might have problems in the actual game itself running, you know. So let's not do that. That we can close. And then in our map now, in our actual map that we work with, we're going to import. So let's just import first. Um, go into maps, splines. Let's just do the, the traffic system. All right. So we're going to open that traffic system. I'm just going to put some cars here on the road and we're going to test it and see that it works. All right. So there you have it. Now we have the two scripts running. That's the two scripts we need for to make the, the cars work. You'll notice that this file, the XML file, data maps, and then it is map DE traffic system. That is the actual XML that runs all your vehicles. If it's a tra traffic system, if it was the pedestrians, it will be for the pedestrians. So you can actually go to this directory, copy this file, just copy it into your maps and just change this here to your directory from maps onwards. So, um, so yeah, you will, you take the dollar data out and you add your own directory here with the file name and then you edit that file to whatever you want it to be. So if you go into this, go into data, into maps, and then find uh, the one that says uh, there is the ped pedestrian system and then we want the one for traffic system. That's the one that we currently have. And here it is. This is your vehicles. If you click on that, this is your first vehicle. So yeah, you can change anything about this vehicle, the sounds, the colors, whatever, you know. Um, and then that's your second vehicle. That's your first vehicle. You can even change the speed that it runs, uh, how fast it goes. Um, everything so you can modify this to your liking but just don't modify the one in your games folder like where we are now copy this out into your maps folder change the directory here in your in your um, script so that it runs this XML not the one in game because otherwise I'm just gonna leave it here as the default because I don't want to fiddle with that uh, it, this map this video I'm not going to be bothered about uh, showing you showing you what to do there or what you can just go on your own and fiddle around and play around with that uh, you, you cannot harm the game but at all you know <laughs> you can only have maybe cause an error or something in your script and may maybe it won't work but it won't crash the game you know it shouldn't crash the game <laughs> say that rather <laughs> okay guys so yes here we have it enough said so what we're going to do now is we're going to go create a uh, transform group and we're going to call this transform group splines, small letters, splines like that. I'm going to cut that, control X. Sorry, it's actually just reselected, control X. Because sometimes, even though it's selected, it's not pointing to it in the in this uh, scene graph. So <laughs> just re click on it and that's it. Go into the gameplay. I normally want all my gameplay stuff together. So put it under that folder. And then what we can do is we can take this traffic system, cut it as well, and drop it into the splines so that it's all neatly bundled into one place. It's not necessary to do it, but that's just the way I like to organize my tree, you know, so that it's nicely organized and stuff's not just lying everywhere, you know. So I know in my mind if I want to find splines, it will be under gameplay. So I just go gameplay splines and there it is. Good, enough said. Now you'll find if you open your traffic system, you'll find all the loops that was in the original map and you can click on them. There they are going like a Boeing. And to tip on this, guys, you cannot edit these if it's in this traffic system transform. If it's under this script, you cannot edit it. So if there's a loop that you want to edit, for instance, that one, uh, I'm just going to place this one, control B, just drop it here on this uh, field. And then you'll see if you now try and click on this, it will disappear because it's in, it's working under the script. Uh, so you won't be able to modify it. So what we're going to do is we're going to select it, cut it, drop it outside. Just click in here where there's nothing. Oops, sorry, man. Ah, just want to minimize that now. Just click in there where there's nothing, paste it there, and it will drop it at the bottom. There it is. Now, if you click on it, you can actually you can actually move it about you see so this is just a tip 
to remember you can't edit in the under the script you need to take it out and out uh, out of uh, um, the position where it is in the script right so the map gameplay splines all right so the rest of these i'm just going to delete because we're not going to need more than one spline just going to have those the park cars you can delete those too because uh, what the park cars does uh, you can use them if you want just to give you an idea this is all different vehicles so if you got a map with a lot of vehicles for instance you want to place a vehicle somewhere we can actually use it um, say for instance we want to park a car here next to the bus stop for instance you can take this park car paste uh, uh, control B and place it there right so there will be a park car now when when the game uh, spawns there will be a park car so <laughs> Just for fun, let's park three cars here, uh, and we will have a look in the in the map itself what happens. The first three, and then the rest will delete. Oh, mind you, let's just leave them there. Um, I'm not going to delete them now because maybe I want to use them later on. So let's just take that first three, and then we'll come to the bus stop and we'll see what is standing here. You know, good. All right. And I suppose there's a lot of parked park cars here. You can you can actually uh, duplicate these. Click on it and uh, select it and uh, um, control D to duplicate. And so you can have multiple of them without a problem. Okay. So anyway, enough about park cars. Right. So we are going to take this traffic loop. In fact... Uh, in fact, let's just start a new one. Like I said, there's no point in editing, um, uh, trying to uh, create or, or modify this one because it's going to be a nightmare. So first of all, let's have a look at where we want this traffic to, to drive. Now, I don't want them driving around the farm here. Um, let's just do something small because I don't want to have a big job because the whole idea is just to show you how to do it. So let's have vehicles just drive um, here from the bridge just here and make a u-turn and back just for fun all right so let's delete this uh, traffic loop so what i'm going to do i'm going to just copy this name because i'm lazy <laughs> wow sorry i don't confess that i'm not lazy i just want to make things simpler lazy is a very bad thing to speak over yourself i'm definitely not lazy <laughs> all right so now now that we have that, we don't need this at all. I just want the name. Uh, so we're going to go create and spline. Okay. You take this spline. And you'll see now it's... That actual spline is now there in the middle of the map. Because everything you, you create gets stored in the bottom, underneath everything. Somewhere there under <laughs> in the middle of the map. <laughs> Alright, so you're going to place this where you want to um, have the loop to start. Now I'm going to make the loop start in somewhere in the middle of the loop. Control B to place it. Or you can go here to, uh, I think it's edit and then interactive placement if you want to go by mouse. But I mean shortcuts is so much easier. Just control B and there it is, you know. <laughs> Alright, first thing you'll notice, you've got the S and the E which is start and end. Uh, and I must confess, I haven't worked, I haven't, uh, worked with this um, much before. But um, I've noticed that in the previous versions of the editor, you'll have the start and the end. And when you click on the start and the end, uh, it, it will be uh, um, highlighted and you'll have your arrows in the direction to move. But with this latest version now, 8.22, 8.2.2, if you, the moment you click there, the, the direction arrows is totally confused so you'll see now what I mean all right so now the first thing we want to do is you can move this about but be careful because you want you want to always have your thing on the ground where the vehicle is going to be and this is a slope so you're going to have to place everyone because if you just move it about and put use your insert key you're going to have at the same level something and it's not going to be on the exact ground so always use control b to place your stuff um, move it about and then the moment you leave your left button it will place it there on that spot on the right place so don't move it again from there 
because um, otherwise you're going to have a height problem. I can demonstrate that to you uh, by going, like for instance, if I press insert now on my keyboard, uh, let me just find it on mine, there it is. Oh, sorry, I must first uh, click on the start and end. So you go click on start and end first before you can insert. And then you can now move, you can now move that along. And if I create the next waypoint by pressing insert, that one will actually be underground now. So that will be a problem. So I'm going to go control Z because this is a slope, remember, going up. And we want it. We want to have. Um, we want to have the the waypoints follow the the road going up. All right. So let me just go Control Z again. Let's start there from the scratch. There is a way to overcome that, guys. Is you can go. Uh, you can select. Let me just go there. What has happened now to my spline? <laughs> oh my word, I've, I've lost it now. Let me just click on the E again. Maybe I must just come in a bit closer. Click on the E again. Yes, that was what happened. All right. So what you can do, I'm going to show you another way. Control B for the next one. Just there. Press insert. Control B for the next one. Press insert. Now the next... The, the, the thing that you need to consider as well is your vehicles is going to go from start to end in a loop. So there's two sides on the road that you normally travel. It's the, the two lanes, um, the left and the right. This is dust roads, obviously. And in South Africa, we drive on the left side of the road. So I'm going to actually let me uh, let me do it the right way because I'm actually working in the overseas in like in um, America and those places where they drive on the on the on the other side of the road the wrong side of the road you know <laughs> okay so let me let me do this over um, I don't want to uh, I'm gonna just have it oh, maybe I'm actually just wasting time now guys sorry man let's just do it again spline uh, control B I'll put it on this side now and now remember, um, you work actually in reverse. So if you go start and end, right, so that, that way, now the vehicles, sorry, my wife is just dropping me some nice things to drink here. <laughs> Wonderful. Um, so if you um, are going from start to end, this is now also going to go in the wrong way. You know, so I must actually... Just turn the arrow around so that you you will start here, go around and come back. So that's also another thing you need to consider is the direction of your map. Are you are you a left hand or a right hand uh, um, driver? You know, good. So guys, yes, get yourself something nice to drink and relax. I'm gonna just quickly make a few um, few uh, waypoints, and it's as simple as click on your first. Um, on your first thing, I just want to go here to the start point. You must select it and then control B to place it a little bit forward. Press insert to insert the waypoint and there it is. And now I'm going to just go zoom out a bit. And the more waypoints you put, the better for the smoothness of your, uh, of your, uh, um, your loop, of your traffic. And it's exactly the same process whether you use traffic, whether you use uh, pedestrians, guys. All right, so control B for the next one. I'm going to go farther out now because I don't want to spend too much time doing it. Control B for the next one. Okay. And then insert. Control B. Insert. Great. And then here we're going to go uh, just a small bit here. So I'm going to go uh, shorter, shorter spans, or what you say, between my um, waypoints. So it's just control B. And the nice way, the nice thing about this, guys, is um, if you um, if you do it this way, you don't have to come back because every waypoint you've put is exactly on the road. Because with interactive placement, it places it on the surfaces where you want it. 
Whereas if you've moved it with the arrow and then just created the waypoint, you have to come back and make sure every waypoint is on the surface. And with this way, you don't have to do that, you know. So, yeah, much, much easier this way. Control B. Let's jippo. Make it nice and long. Control B. Insert. Control B. Insert. Control B. Insert. Control B. Insert. Now you see here, uh, it's going, it's starting to uh, go underground. So I'm going to go Control B. Rather bring this back. There. Insert it there. Control B. It's because it's going uphill and remember I said it's better to have shorter distance between your waypoints and that way you will always be sure all right so let's uh, start making a u-turn here short steps is nice and secure control b ends it control b uh, we just carry on like that guys i know it's very much repetition I try and make it as fast as I can and then the next step guys uh, let's just throw a few in here um, just to uh, ends it. okay the next step guys this start and end must be virtually on top of each other so what you do come in close control B uh, Put another one there. Insert there. Right, so we're going to come a bit closer. And you need the start and end to be virtually on top of each other. So the last one, I'm going to place Control B. All right, and then press Insert, and you'll see. It shifts my 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 um, my start. Oh my word! You know what? I've done it the wrong way around. Uh, but anyway, let's not focus on that. I'm just showing you how to do it. You can do it right. <laughs> Correct my error. Okay. So what you do now is you click on the S again. All right, and you go Control B on your S. And you're going to place it with your left button and hold it. Don't drop it. And you're going to put it like right over the E like that. As close as can be like that. Just like that. And there you are guys. That is your spline now all sorted. All sorted out and working. And if I go now and I save this. Um, I should have vehicles running there. Uh, but now, before we do that, I want to just take that um, name, Traffic Loop 08, Control C, and then I'm going to click on the spline once, click there, again, press delete, click there, rename that, let's do Traffic Loop 01, just for fun, not that the name is too much, you can call it Traffic, whatever you want, Control, cut that, drop it in the the traffic system where the script is and once you've done that you can't edit it anymore control v park it in there and there you are guys that is now our traffic loop all done and what i'm going to do is i'm quickly going to export it um let me just see yeah it, it looks all right i think good and if i want to come and edit any one of these now i can't so i have to take it out um, out of the traffic system before uh, I can do that and I just want to move this up I just see now because I first want the traffic loop and then the park car so remember that also just I don't know if it's going to make a difference but yeah just do it as it was in the original game good and now we can just save our map just as it is and we're going to quickly have a look in game to see how it is doing while that is busy saving I just want to go in here, uh, take my actual map, which is unedited, uh, control X that, go into my backup, uh, maps, and then my backups, tiny backup, 
I'm going to paste it in here and then just call it tiny release uh, I'm just gonna call it temp because I'm just doing a temp here quick so so if I need to roll back I can I know I can use the temp one to roll back all right very important like I said from the beginning guys make backups every time you've done any changes in your um, in your i3d on the actual map I've got a habit every time I zip I make a backup it just saves you a lot of headaches if something goes wrong <laughs> okay is this guy now saved yes it is now uh, we're going to just close this up oh my head. I just want to quickly get this thing because I've plugged my headphone in I really hope this was recording <laughs> we'll see later on have I have a headache or not okay so now the actual map and this way you can actually just see how I do it as well right select all in the map directory don't zip the, the folder zip the contents add to archive select the zip browse go into my mods folder because there's no tiny anymore go save go e ok and there it is ok so now it's busy putting our folder in there and we cannot open the game yet because uh, obviously um, we still need this to finish zipping great guys so you follow exactly the same procedure as um, the vehicles for the for the pedestrians and as well for the trains there's no difference the only thing with the trains obviously is you're going to have a track and you're going to place that little you're first going to lay your track and then you're going to place your um, your waypoints on the track so that it has the right level that should trick with the trains have it on the right level so let it place it and even even um, even if if uh, you test your map and the train is not on the right spot then you're going to have to come back and and uh, modify or edit every waypoint that little bit up or down uh, which which can be a, a pain with the train systems but anyways I'm just sharing um, sharing uh, some thoughts and some ideas and things that you need to 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 watch out for and to know good um, yes so what's happened now is obviously we've placed that that um, spline in the script and the script is going to run this the moment the map loads the i3d that that script is going to run because it's built into the i3d now and it's going to use the in-game uh, settings for it because remember that it points to the in-game xml uh, which is there but like i said if you want to modify it change the cars frequencies and the colors and whatever cars you want there you can load anything there like tractors or whatever you want you can really go wild i know the guys have put in trucks and tractors and all kinds of funny things <laughs> good great so let's start up the map and have a quick look tiny there it is continue uh, we're not going to need anything except for our development tools uh, here we go easy development controls and start up run the script or the um, the console so we can see the log um, I've made an actual video of the console um, how to bring up your console if you want if you're not sure how to do this you can look at my video there under the playlist um, and just find it I've recently I think about two videos ago released it how to open the console and it's nothing it's not a big secret you just go into the game directory edit the game.xml file and I'll show you I'll show you in the video exactly where it is and how to do it so yeah, it's very simple and then you press your tilde key in game and the tilde key is obviously the one next to the one and great stuff you've got uh, um, the console running and immediately you can see here if there's any errors with anything you've changed in your map you'll immediately pick it up while the script is after um, the whole game is running your XMLs and everything because at the moment your i3d is running and it's loading everything and the very last thing is the water tank i know that because that's the last thing in my last thing i've added to the game and there it is start so now let's just get rid of this get rid of all the cinematics and stuff happening uh, let's bring up our tools quickly run uh, flight mode yes 
Okay, and then we can go to our cars and have a look here where the cars are. For those of you who are looking for the first time, this is a map I've built and a whole series of videos how to build a map. You can start from video one. We've made this map from scratch and um, done it all, all by themselves. And there's your cars running, guys. You'll see there's a vehicle coming. It's a very small spline. The bigger the spline, I think the more cars or vehicles it will, it will run. And let's just see this guy make a U-turn going back. And you'll see I've, I've got the, the thing uh, wrong. So my direction, although it looked like I started, it actually goes in reverse, guys. So when you end, you're actually moving the start point. So it will be better for you to start with the end point and move the end point rather than the start point. Great. So um, our spline is working fine. If your spline is not running, it is probably because that start and end point is not close enough to each other. And just go back into your map, move that points together. You'll see there was a little flip there um, when it, it started at the, uh, the new loop. I just want to have a quick look again. It actually makes a little flip there. And it's look, it looks like it's running nicely on the ground, on the road itself. It's not going into the road or above the road. Let me just go down a bit. Like I, yeah, you see there, it was a little bit into the into the soil, and that's what I said about the more waypoints you put. Let's just see if it does another flip. No, that one was smooth. Maybe it was just a glitch. Oh, there it is. It is. It is a little glitch here and there, but it's working fairly all right. I don't see any problems. Now for the parked cars, let's just have a look at those uh, parked cars that we placed here. If we can see any parked cars. Like I was saying earlier guys, uh, this is a, a tiny map I've, uh, I've decided to make a script with. I uh, um, start from scratch. And these are the three parked cars guys. <laughs> so you can fiddle those around. And... Uh, um, this one is is taking a wheelie. It's in a, 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 st a stasis position, standing and wheeling. <laughs> Something went wrong there, but anyways, I think maybe it was uh, on the original. Remember, we, we copied this from the original game, so it was probably set on a hill or something in the original uh, on the original map. But not to worry, it is working fine and I think we might find some park cars flying around somewhere on the map with the others, either underground or above ground. <laughs> but anyway, I will modify those accordingly. I don't see anything quickly, but obviously they've got a view range, so let's have a look. They obviously have a uh, range that you can see them. I don't see anything by the looks of it, but I know they'll be here. If you drive around in the map, you'll find them because <laughs> they're somewhere. <laughs> okay. Anyways, guys, that is just a quick tutorial on how to do a spline, how to set up vehicles and pedestrians and those kind of things on the road. I really hope it was a bit helpful and maybe I could share some tips. Um, oh, yes, what I wanted to quickly, lastly, say, um, if you want to modify the height or check just verify the height of your spline once you've finished you can um, you can select that little waypoint by clicking on it and then press your page down key and it will drop it onto the ground or the first thing that's above the ground so that's a way you can just verify you press the page down key and it will drop it onto the ground so you click you click on it uh, use the up arrow to pull it up a bit and press the uh, page down key and it will drop it down onto the surface again. So that way you can make sure it's onto the surface. Um, if, if you think for, for some reason you've moved it about and it's not on the surface, then you can uh, verify it that way. Just select it, use the app arrow, move it up into the air, press the page down and it will drop it straight to the ground and that will be fine. Good man, guys, I really hope it was a bit informative. Um, and uh, it, it shared a bit on, on the subject. And thank you so, so much for watching. Please do consider subscribing. And please do consider sharing. Remember to hit the bell for notifications. 
and uh, thank you for watching this is former bob and what a wonderful time we've spent together again i hope it helped a bit take care man until next time cheers